What's good, baby? It's been a while since I last did a review of an album. I think the last one we did in this channel was Revival from Eminem. So it's been a minute, but today we're going to be reviewing Her Loss, which is a collaborative album from 21 Savage and Drake. It's an album that came out a couple weeks ago already, but since then till now, I've been I've had it on repeat, and I think I'm you know ready to talk about it and give my opinion on it. Now, before I get started, I'm someone who tends to like a lot of Drake songs. But ironically, I've never been a huge fan of his albums. There are some exceptions. Thank Me Later comes to mind. Uh, I would say Take Care. It never was the same. Also comes to mind. His So Far Gone mixtape. But apart from those, almost everything else to me has been eh. So when I heard this one is a collaborative album, I did get a little bit more excited. Since one, we have 21 Savage in this album. And I like that monotone sound that he usually gives us apart from that the last collaboration they did on jimmy cooks that shit went hard so when i heard this project was announced the first thing i did was listen to some of their past songs and i started getting excited i started getting hyped so the way this this analysis is going to work is i'll talk a little bit about most songs and then at the end, I'll, I'll just give my conclusion of what I think of the project as a whole. So let's, let's get, get this shit. shit. Let's, let's get, get this shit. Let's get, get this shit. All right, track number one, Rich Flex. 29 seconds. That's the amount of seconds it took for 21 Savage to call you a pussy. <laughs> Put a nigga in the chicken wing. Pussy. So we got the intro. To me, the intro is always very important because it kind of sets the tone for the album. And this intro to me accomplished just that it got me hyped now i will admit that the first couple times i listened to this intro i didn't really understand what drake was saying because when drake starts saying 21 can you do something for me i'm like okay what you asking 21 to do for you and then it sounded like he was saying 21 can you drop some bars for my pussy ass for me and i was like wait a minute so I had to go look at the lyrics and that's not what he said. What he said was 21. Can you do something for me? Drop some bars to my pussy X for me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now I understand what you're saying. Cause that, that shit ain't make much sense before. Drake's whole intro is hilarious. <laughs> you know, he's hyping the shit out of 21 Savage, which in turn is hyping the shit out of me. Cause now I find myself do your thing. 21, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 hey. And 21 came in and he did his thing. I fucks with 21's nonchalant, monotone sound. You know what I'm saying? He did have some nice wordplay, like the part where he says, took her panties off and this bitch thicker than the plot. I'm like, okay. Took her panties off and this bitch thicker than the plot. I also like his take on Megan the Stallion's Savage song. I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Yeah. I'm a savage. 21. Smacker, booty, and magic. Now, if you weren't paying attention to the intro and you just left this on on the background while you went to do some shit, you would think that the song kind of ends after his verse like i i thought this shit was two different songs i thought drake came in with the intro hyping up 21 21 comes and does this shit and then once we have that drake singing part i thought that was ending the song and then the next beat that comes up i thought that was the start of another song so when i first listened to the album i had that shit on the background and when this part comes in I'm thinking either this is the end of the first song or this is the start of like the second song. Cause then this motherfucker came with this shit. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I'm saying? So I like that beat change. It feels like two different songs. And it also synchronizes with his singing. Like his singing kind of laid the groundwork. It, it, it smoothed you out. And then he came with that hard shit pause. And all of a sudden I'm like, yo, I'm on that slaughter gang shit. Hey. Hey, Drake comes in, he starts rapping, and I'm like, oh shit. This is what we're getting in this album? The album from, from, from start to finish, this, this, this is what we're going to get? I'm digging it. He's talking this shit. He's saying, you rappers love asking if I fucked when you know I did. You rappers love asking if I fucked when you know he did. When you know he did. There's a whole bunch of people that popped them in my head, and one of them, I'm not going to lie, was like Kim. I'm like, oh, so you really did? All right. Which... 
to me it's kind of like a little a little jab at Kanye, which I feel also happens a couple more times during the album. But we'll talk about that one this time. But overall, I fuck with this joint. I couldn't ask for a better intro to an album. It got me. It did everything I want. It got me hype. It got me doing shit that I never thought I was gonna fucking do. Like do your thing, Twenty One. I never. I, I never. I never expected myself to even say shit like that. And I'm here fucking dancing. Do your thing. Hey, do your thing, 21. Hey. I'm fucking slaughter gang shit. Sticks and stone. I'm, I'm saying everything. So the first track, I fucks with it. And it got my expectations for the album even higher. So track two, major distribution. Now, I'm not going to go in depth about every song. I don't think every song deserves to be analyzed the same way. I feel there's a couple that are important to touch on and then some others I'll talk more generally. The second track comes in and it starts with, you know, Drake giving you a little bit of that singing that we're used to from him. You know, a nice vibe to it or, you know, very relaxed. Major you, okay. But then the beat come through. Hey. Oh. In this mansion, I'm gonna call it oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, so you really rapping, Drake. Oh. This ain't this ain't that techno album. Okay. So we're in the first song. If, you know, he was talking his shit and he was going at people that were talking shit. On this one, he's stunting on niggas. He said he'd pay 100K just to get them out his life. Okay. How that's a small price to pay. Despite paid a hundred rand or something like simple price to keep them out my life. I mean, talk your shit. Also saying bad bunny numbers. It's a robbery. Major distribution labels call me bad bunny numbers. It's a robbery. 500 million just for Aubrey. 500 million just for Aubrey. Bad Bunny's killing it right now. Bad Bunny has broken so many records this last year so that's drake giving him a shout out letting him know you know i see what you're doing but then he says 500 million bro 500 million dollars that's what his new contract was 500 million <laughs> motherfucker getting baseball contract 21 also proceeds by saying something similar where instead of saying bad bunny he says harry styles major distribution labels calling harry styles numbers just to rob you, the first two songs of this new project I'm feeling both. I like both. Third track comes on on BS. Hey, hey, yeah. Hey. Around this point, I'm like, yo, three tracks in, just the starting beat of this song. I already know this shit gonna go hard as fuck. I'm feeling it completely. This is the first song in which Drake and Twenty One Savage interchange lines within the same verse, which ends up being, I think, the best part of this song. There's a line where Twenty One Savage says, "I can't write my wrongs, but I can write these hooks." I wonder if that was directed at Pusha. Write my wrongs, but I can still write these hooks. I mean, Pusha T did say, "How can you ever write these wrongs when you can't even write your songs?" Mm. How could you ever write these wrongs when you don't even write your songs? I feel that was a shot at Pusha. Also, when you take into account what Drake says afterwards, when he says you ain't from around here and the board is open or the borders are open, Pusha T not too long ago, I think it was on Drink Champs, he said that he was banned from Canada. I've been to Canada before. I can't, I'm banned from Canada. Banned from Canada. I thought you was just saying that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm serious. And pussy and he hit it on the nose, but that border's open while you acting like it's closed. I'm so Drake's saying, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Those borders are open. While you acting like it's closed, it feels like a shot I push. But I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think. I think the best line in the whole song was the part where 21 says, I jump on your song and make you sound like the feature. I jump on your song and make you sound like you the feature. And then Drake responds by saying, I jump on your song and make the record label think they need you. Oh, that's foul. I jump on your song and make a label think they need you. For real. Damn, nah, nah, nah. nah. He, he fouled for that one. This motherfucker also said, my uncle sister raised the real one. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I'm done with Drake, bro. Yeah, my uncle sister knows she raised a real one. Ill one. Motherfucker sound like one of them Wall Street bet dudes, bro, where it's like, uh, my girlfriend's boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? Like, this motherfucker crazy. This song in general go fucking hard, so the first three songs, I'm f I fucks with all of them. Now, in, in the outro, which I guess is my biggest complaint about the song, I, I, outros are fine and everything, but... When, it's fine like the first time you hear them once you hear somebody narrating at the end for like fucking two minutes but there's a part there where he says this is like paris we don't do like fashion week that's what we do in paris we don't do fashion week we don't do fashion week i i, I don't know why but i also feel that's a shot of kanye you know kanye does fashion weeks in paris 
Paris is known for their fashion weeks. It's a shot there, but I can be reading too much into it. Track number four, Back Outside Boys. Hey. Hey. I feel the name is a play on the Backstreet Boys. This is a more commercial song. It's the song that I expect to blow up. It also gives me some Cardi vibes for some reason. Playboy Cardi. Um, 21 Savage doesn't even jump on this record. So it's the first record we get where it's just Drake. It's okay. Um, I don't put it with the first three. Depending on how I feel, I'll most likely skip this one. She a 10, trying to rap. It's good on mute. Yeah. That's what the motherfucker says. She good on mute. Damn, she that bad though? Track five, Privileged Rappers. Yeah, look at me dead in my eyes. I know that you know that a nigga ain't lying. Well, too much respect. To me, Privilege Rapper is okay. I like the beat a little bit, but apart from that, it didn't really captivate me. So, so far, the first three songs were all bangers, in my opinion. They're all going straight to my playlist. And then I listened to track four, and it's, eh, it's, it's okay. I understand that it's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's more radio record. And then this fifth one, fifth one is... It's decent. Like, all I got from this record is 21 Savage complaining about the girl that he's fucking with coming over when she's on her period. That's... Basically all I took from this record. How you come over the spot when you know it's your time of the month? How? Track six, spin about you. Hey. Okay. So this is the first love song of the of the album. I was also thinking, when are we actually gonna get some of these love songs? Not that I necessarily want them, but the album is called Her Loss. Unless it was just gonna be talking shit about her loss. But Knowing Drake, he most likely is going to have a song where he's venting about the loss. And this song, 21 Savage, is showing his softer side, saying he got feelings for her, making reference to crew love, and showing some insecurities that, I don't know if insecurity is the right word, maybe, but some issues that men tend to have when it comes to their partners and, and their body count. Asking for it and saying he's hoping it's not too high. Feelings for you. Hope you ain't loving the crew. How many bodies you got? Drake's verse was more political. He, he starts by throwing shades at the government. The whole situation with the Roe versus Wade. When he says, damn, just turned the news and seen that men that never got pussy are making laws about what women can do. Damn, just turned on the news and seen that man who never got pussy in school and making laws about what women could do. Basically insinuating that most of these men that are making these decisions are probably sexually deprived and are filled with spite. So they're taking it out on women. Regardless of how you feel about that, I do agree with his logic though, that what the fuck are men doing telling women what they can and cannot do with their body? And I feel this is vice versa as well. There should be no fucking woman in government telling me as a man what I can and cannot do with my body. So I understand that logic. Drake proceeds by talking about his sex tape and if that shit ever get leaked, how it would go platinum, okay? It's okay. It's not my type of music. I feel like 21 Savage might have been out of his comfort zone here, but it, it, you know, it's, it's whatever. Track seven hours in silence. Hey. 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 Listen, the, the first five, six seconds, and I already told myself this is a Drake song. This, this this is that Drake sound. Drake's on his singing shit here. This is basically like the second half of Scorpion. So if you're into that type of music and that album in general, then you're then you're gonna love this song. At this point in the album, I'm I'm okay. It started off super strong, and then in the middle, it's been decent at best in my opinion. It's feeling more like a Drake album to me at this point. Like Hours in Silence is definitely a drake type song uh back outside boy doesn't even have 21 savage on it and then spin about you which is the first love song is more of a drake style type song as well but we're seven songs in you know we, we got nine more to go so at this point i'm like okay we're we gonna get more of a of a drake sound going forward is this album mostly a drake album that just has 21 savage on some songs or are we gonna go back to that those bangers that we heard at the, at the beginning of the album. Track eight, Treacherous Twins. Yeah. Hey. Okay. This is one that's growing more and more the more I listen to it. It's not there yet, but it is growing. Initially, I wasn't too fond of it at all, but I'm liking it more. And I think a lot of it has to do with 21. Drake was okay on this song, but once 21 enters, he came with some fucking nice wordplay. Like, I don't like this motherfucker said... When I go to a club, I don't I don't show ID because they know I'm 21. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> how I'm surprised motherfucker never said that before. <laughs> that shit was okay. I see you. I don't show ID at clubs because they know that I'm 21. Track number nine, Silco Loco. Hey. So this is the first song 
after the initial three where I'm like, okay, I fucks with this one immediately. I like the beat. I like how fast paced it is. I like the sample one more time. I like how he starts off by saying he's fucking a French bitch because I can relate to that shit. You know what I'm saying? My girl's French. C'est la vie. But it's interesting because in this song, he goes after Megan, which is what has made this song the most controversial song in the album. He said this bitch lie about getting shots. This bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. She don't even get the joke, but she's still smiling. How you guys feel about that line? I mean, it's a tough bar. You know, it's a double entendre. Not only can he be referring to the whole situation with Tory Lanez, but obviously he can be referring to getting a butt shot. Especially since she's just she's a stallion, right? And you know a lot of stallions uh, do end up getting shots. But it's still foul because even if the whole entire purpose was to you know insinuate the whole butt shot shit, there's a lot of women that he could have used as an example. But it wouldn't have been as hard as this bar is because they don't have that double entendre with being literally shot at. So I do agree with Megan and her getting mad and shit. I think it was inappropriate. More so when we take into context the last the last couple of songs. It was just like two songs ago, two, three songs ago, where he was talking about uh you know women's rights and stuff like that. And this album advocates that he's a he's a feminist. So you're taking women rights and you're fighting for women and saying you'll be there for women, but then you take a shot at her. If he hadn't said all that other shit in this album, if he didn't get political, he never mentioned none of that shit about being feminist or none, then I wouldn't. I'd be like, ah, right, you know what I'm saying? That bar still kind of foul because you're fucking playing along with, with somebody who just got shot and it's kind of in a way insinuating that you're believing Tory Lane's side of the story. But once you say all the stuff you said in this album, it does feel hella hypocritical. And like I said, if you try to make the case that it was just on, you know, the butt shots, I think Lil Yachty came out and said that the, the verse was supposed to be interpreted in that way. You could have used a lot of different women just to get that butt shit. You know what I'm saying? But you went to Meg because of that situation. It, 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 there's just no buts about it. No pun intended. He knew how this would be perceived. I feel like he also takes a shot at Kanye in this joint when he's talking about linking with Jay Prince. Hey. Which was interesting to me because I, I literally thought they just reconciled like, what, maybe a couple weeks ago? Maybe a month ago? Well, it was before Kanye Web was on his shit, so it was maybe like a month, a month and a half ago. But I thought they just reconciled. And now they're throwing sh he's throwing shots at Kanye like three times in the album? Kanye did respond and he said, enough already. I done gave this man his flowers multiple times. Let's really see who our real ops are in the music game. So, you know, a more civil yay it's ironic to me though because he he promoted this album and he went on drink champ saying drake is the best basically and all this shit and drake is here i don't know if it's strategic trying to in a way disassociate himself with yay after all the controversial statements that yay has made throughout the last month but i like this song you know i fucks with both verses you know 21 came in and he showed he was able to come with this faster beat as well and i think they both did their thing so this is one of those songs uh that i fucks with so the first three songs i fucks with and then for like five straight songs i didn't really care too much and then silco loco was dope and now we're on track 10 pussy and millions <laughs> So this is the only feature we have in the album, as in apart from Drake and 21 Savage, we also have Travis Scott. We do have Yachty and some of these songs ad with his ad libs and shit. I'm talking about like having a full on verse. This is the first feature and the only feature in this whole album. And it can actually be one of my critiques of the of the album, because I know it's a collaborative album, so I won't usually ask for features. But since they're already bringing in Travis Scott and Travis Scott fucking destroyed this song. He's the one that made this. I, I fucks with this song and I fucks with this song because of Travis. And it made me be like, oh shit, maybe a couple other features here and there would have actually could have made this a lot better. I like the whole more money, more problems that keeps being repeated. It's an obvious reference to Biggie. They say more money, more problems. Hey. Bring on problems. Bring on the problems. Drake. And this song is mostly on his singing shit. And 21 Savage was okay, but Travis came and did his thing. So to me, I can skip the first half of the song and just go to the to, to the end. Yo, Travis came with some amazing wordplay. Let's start with the I'm off the juice, never can cycle the mix, which that, that's how I'm perceiving that line. Cause I checked the lyrics and the lyrics say I'm off the juice could never cycle the mix or some shit like that. But in my ears, 
I hear I'm off the juice never can seco never can seco the mix. And if that's actually how he how it's supposed to be, then that I, I fucks with that one. A MJ thing, I'm talking to Brady thing, I'm off of the juice, never can seco the mix. Cause that's an obvious reference to Jose Canseco, used to be a professional baseball player who did a lot of performance enhancing drugs, which in baseball we call that juicing being on the juice he juiced so travis coming in here and saying i'm off the juice never can seco the mix that shit that there's just in my mind there's just no way those two shits he didn't mean it like that more so when you take into account the lines that came before he's talking about brady he's talking about mj so it's all all sports related he follows that up with full puff he can't comb rocking the breeze out of twist full puff he can't comb that mm. full puff he can't comb Sean Combs, Puff that, like he, yo, he went in, bro. I'm telling you. And then that whole Christian verse where he says he's not acting like a Christian, which he combines with Christian Dior. Acting like Christians in here, but Christian Dior and they own the bigger we get. Then he says he thanks God for this. He be handing out gifts like Christmas on the 25th, which is essentially a, a you know, a Christian holiday. Yeah. Gotta thank God for this. I got a lot that I give. I'll be handing out gifts like the Christmas on 25th. His wordplay in this song is what saves it to me. I fucks with this joint, but I fucks with it because Travis did his shit on this on the on this song. Track 11. Broke boys. Oh. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Gotten you. This song goes hard. I just can't say nothing about it. That's it. It goes hard. We can skip to the next song. It goes hard. A lot of it has to do with that fucking beat. It gets me hyped every single time. Now, I did say I think I think they stopped taking shots at Kanye, but I feel like they took another shot at Kanye here. Or maybe not. Let me know what you guys think. But there's a there's a line where 21 Savage says, I got more stripes than Adidas. I got more stripes than Adidas. Yeah, I got the stripes, but fuck Adidas, nigga. I got more stripes than Adidas. Drake comes in and says, yeah, I got the stripes, but fuck Adidas. Now... The reason I say that this might be a shot of Kanye is because obviously Kanye, Yeezys, the Adidas, Dio, and all that type of stuff. But Kanye is no longer with Adidas. That being said, I don't know if this was produced before that. It could also be that Drake just feels some type of way towards Adidas because he fucks with Nike and Jordans and all that type of shit. Or it can also be because there was supposed to be a rollout with Adidas with his kid that Pusha T kind of fucked up when he came with his diss track. And it can be something personal there. I don't know. But that shit was hilarious. Just hearing him say fuck Adidas. I got the stripes, but fuck Adidas. 21 had some decent wordplay on this song. I'm on the jet like my last name Lee. I'm on the jet like my last name Lee. Okay. Born in October, I'm so OVO. Born in October, I'm so OVO. October's very own. You know, it, it was alright. Okay. I think the best one, hands down, was when he said She called me mucus, I stay in her throat. She called me a mucus, I stay on her throat. God damn! Nigga savage, bro. Oh, hell no. I'm using that one. 21 did his thing. On the second half of the song, which switches up, Drake takes shots at broke people, basically broke boys. Broke boys. I can't talk to broke boys. Yeah, I can't. He takes aim at people who are not investing in their careers, which that part I agree, but the whole broke boys, broke boys, broke boys, broke boys. I can't talk to broke boys and all that shit. It, it, it's one of those... You know, egocentric, conceited, arrogant Drake that we know. No new friends, no new friends. I can't talk to broke boys. It's him letting people know that he's on another level than them. He's superior in some type of way. I'm broke as fuck, so I feel some type of way. All right? Track 12, Middle of the Ocean. Just the first five seconds, I know what kind of song we're getting. This is definitely a Drake song. In fact, 21 is not on this song. I already knew we were getting, especially when you look at, because there's two things. The way I, I already know a Drake song is first, you let that shit play for like the first 10 seconds and you kind of get a vibe. You also check how long the song is going to be. And this song is about like five, like six minutes. So this is one of those Drake venting songs. He's just going to talk and talk and talk. This is the one where he's going to let you know how he feels. He does that quickly when he starts saying, niggas so ignorant are hood they'd be like why the fuck you making techno niggas so ignorant in our hood they'd be like why the fuck you making techno that lets me know you know that he felt some type of way about the reaction that he has been getting on his last couple albums but especially the last one where i honestly don't know anybody that fucked with it 
that last album, he, I don't know anybody that said I fucks with that album. So, you know, we got Drake and his feelings here. He also confesses in this song that he wants to have a sexual encounter with... Emily, well, I cannot, I don't know how you say her last name. Ratajakowski, Ratajakowski, Rata, I don't know how you say that name. Ratajakowski, Emily Ratajakowski, but her. Some rider here fresh off the board, so maybe express my remorse if she want to rebound with me. That being said, this song is probably the song where Drake probably shows his best wordplay of the whole album. He went in on certain parts. There's, there's too much wordplays to mention them all. Like I had to write a couple of them down because there was just so much wordplay on this song. But Big Benjamin's like the Pittsburgh Steeler. Drake, you got it. Robert Kraft sent the jet for us. That shit was patriotic. Obviously, Big Benjamin with Big Ben, Pittsburgh Steelers. That's an obvious one. You know, Robert Kraft sending... The Jet, Patriotic, The Patriots. You would think we live in Baltimore. The way they raving about the latest product. Raving about the latest product. Baltimore Ravens. Like, he had, he, he was doing his shit this whole... that the, the whole, like, half of the song down, it was all that. That part where he says, I send the labels bills, bills, bills. Like the other two women standing next to Bay. Reference to Destiny's Child. Can you pay my bills? Can you... Dun, 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 dun. I got the head in the clouds. I'm serious. Reference to one of his album covers. I'm going Pink Floyd. You niggas cannot rock with me. She could be giving me head and somehow you're not topping me. <laughs> now, that being said, he does kind of fuck it up a little bit by coming at Serena Williams' husband and shit. I felt like that was a little corny. You know, it's something that happened so long ago. As he says, this is when Quavo sent him that Versace song. So this is way back in the day. To bring that shit up right now, it's like, like yo, that shit old news, bro. What are you doing? But leave it to Drake to hold on to shit for mad long. I fucks with this song at the end of the day. It doesn't have the production value that some of the other songs earlier in the album have. But he gives us some of his best wordplay in this song. Feel like an amber alert the way that I could take her to the mall and she find Tiffany. So the first three songs of the album I fucks with, then it went... Then there was like five songs in a row that I didn't really care too much about. Then track nine with Silco Loco, Pussy and Millions, Broke Boys, and Middle of the Ocean. I fucks with all of them. And now we got Jumbotron shit popping. Track number 13. See, now this part right here. I don't know why, but this song, I, I don't know if it's a Nav song or, or if it's an X, 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 X Tentacion song. But that start reminds me of one of their songs. I just don't know which one. I don't know if you guys can help me out with that shit. If you're getting any Nav vibes or any X vibes from that first five, six, seven seconds. This song, I don't really have much to say, to be honest. Uh, the, the, the line that I like from this song is when he says, Thick Moroccan bitch, it's my fave, I'ma go and beat it. Look it in the mirror, kiss my face, I'm too conceited. Thick Moroccan bitch, that's my fave, I'ma go and beat it. I fucks with that line because my girl's Moroccan. My girl's French and Moroccan. So, at the end of the day, it feels like me and Drake just got the same, you know, we got the same taste when it comes to women. That being said, it's an okay song and I, I don't really care too much about it. Also, the last couple songs, this one and the last one before this one, they're all Drake songs. No 21 Savage on these songs, which, you know, it's it basically what I was saying earlier on where this album is more of a Drake album where 21 Savage jumped on some songs. Track 14, more M's. Okay, so now, see, the, the beginning of more M's to me is giving me Without Warning vibes. That collaborative album with 21 Savage and Takeoff. So, and I fucked with that album. This song's okay. There was a couple There was a couple lines that, you know, made me laugh a little bit. Motherfucker said, put her skims on, now she thinks she Kim. Put her skims on, now she acting like she Kim. Motherfucker also said, I like fried rice, you better cook like you Asian. <laughs> I like fried rice, you better cook like you are Asian. I also enjoyed Drake's flow in this song. It felt so smooth. My man said he got so many hits. It, it wouldn't be fair to do a versus. Mmm. Got so many hits, it won't be fair to do no verses. Mmm. I mean, he ain't lying there, though. Mmm. I, I actually would like to see that. I, I would like to see Drake on a versus, but against who? Who's somebody that would give Drake a run for his money? That's a good question. Who would give Drake a run for his money on a versus? Wayne, maybe? I don't know. That would be good to see. Motherfucker said he can do a versus for five hours straight. That, that's that. I mean, I don't doubt it. Motherfucker do got a lot of hits, though. I, like I said, I want to see that shit. Motherfucker then says, the way that I ran shit, you would think that I'm Iranian. Way that I ran shit, you think I was Iranian. 
I'm not mad at this joint, but track 15, 3 a.m. on Glenwood. Now, this was the surprise of the album to me. I fucks with all 3 a.m.s or fuck the three. I fuck with all a.m. and p.m. songs that Drake has done. Like, how long has he continued that series? What, 10, 12, 13, 14 years? Whether it be 6 p.m. in New York, whether it be, I think, 5 a.m. in Toronto, whether it be 4 p.m. in Calabasas or whatever the fuck, I fucks with all of them. So when I first saw the track list and I saw 3 a.m. on Glenwood, I expected this to be a Drake song. I'm like, yo, Drake just gave us one of those other 3 a.m. p.m. songs that he gonna fucking kill this one. Drake not even on the song. I am shocked that Drake not only gave this to 21, but that he's not even on the song. And it sounds like a Drake song too. So this is a 21 Savage only song. Like I said, the last two songs, they, they, it's both, they're both solo. So Drake has the last song on the album and the one right before 21 Savage is doing his own thing on that song too. In this song, we see a more vulnerable 21 speaking on a lot of things he's seen. PTSD. PTSD and I mean it. Nigga Johnny got killed and I seen it. The instruments synchronize very well with the theme of the song and his nonchalant flow so this this one was one of the surprise songs for me because like i said i initially thought this was going to be a drake song then when i find out it's a 21 savage song i didn't know how to feel and then when i listened to it i'm not mad at it track 16 i guess it's fuck me this is one of those very emotional sad depressing drake this is basically what i initially thought some we would have more of considering uh the album title is her loss this is basically the song that's speaking on loss if you like that more sad gloomy type drake then you th th this will fit right in with you so there we have it that's all that's my opinion on all 16 songs after listening to this album countless times within the last week i think it's a solid album there's no song i hate though there's a handful of songs that i do love um you know and a lot of songs that i would skip to me the album started strong it started with three bangers setting this magnificent tone that unfortunately does not carry on throughout the whole album we do get glimpses here and there with songs like pussy million silco loco broke boys among others but most of the tracks afterwards did not live up to the hype set initially by the first three tracks in my opinion i think it has to do with the fact that although it's a collaborative album it feels like a like a Drake album. If I had to rank it, I would say it's definitely 60, 40, possibly 70, 30 percent Drake. It feels to me like Drake possibly made most of these songs, um, selected the beat, you know, the whole instruments, everything. And then probably last minute, just hit up 21. Let's do some records together. Let's throw it in this album and then come jump on a couple of ones that I already have. So many times me listening to this album, I said, oh, this, this, this sounds like a Drake song. This sounds like a Drake type beat. And at times you have 21 jumping on these tracks, trying to cater to that sound, which worked better than I thought, but, but didn't work as good as the first three songs in the album. Didn't work as good as Jimmy Cooks and a whole bunch of other collaborations that they've done in the past. In fact, I would say if you put Jimmy Cooks in this album, there's like a couple songs that I would, I would, I would consolidate this maybe to around 13, 12, 13 songs with the addition of Jimmy Cooks in this album would have been a lot better. One thing that I would have liked to see just because of how good the Travis Scott feature was, was probably another feature in the album. I wouldn't be mad at that. I know the whole point is to have a collaborative album and the focal, the focal point should just be on dumb too. But if you're already going to add Travis Scott on a song, you know, I'm, then it just opens the door for more features especially since travis went hard on that one that being said the production is pretty fucking good change of rhythms a lot of these songs give you that travis scott type feel where they feel like it's multiple songs in one it made it feel very high quality this is the most i've heard drake in a very long time and it's the most i've heard a drake album since probably if you're reading this it's too late i think he should definitely surround himself with more atlanta rappers they tend to bring a different side of him or they tend to bring that rapping side of him out more overall it was a decent project definitely above his last few albums and if i had to score it i would i would score it out of seven out of ten but that's my opinion let me know what you guys think about this album let me know what you guys what, what's your favorite song what are your top three favorite songs let me know where you agree and disagree with my opinions and you guys already know i'll see you guys in the next video